All right. Good morning, everyone. Listen, um, I don't know if you've read through lately the book of Nehemiah, but I find that this particular book of the Bible to be very, very helpful and um, actually insightful when you start going through especially major changes or major projects that you're going through, um, changes in ministry, changes in life, um, and uh, particularly about warfare. There's a lot in there about warfare. Now, there's one thing here that I see when I am reading through the book of Nehemiah, there's this one verse and Really, I think this is one thing that people often miss, which is what is the motivation or the motive of the man, Nehemiah? And he really actually ex expresses that quickly in just one short verse. Okay, but before I read that verse, I want to explain something. Leading up to this verse, he, he has detailed all of these different things that have gone on. And he also details the fact that he was made the governor of that region by the king at the time. And he had the right as the governor to impose taxes and to sustain himself basically through uh, the taking of taxes. And he chose not to do any of that. And as a matter of fact, not only did he choose not to do that, but he also, out of his own um, wealth or out of his own you know, pocket, basically, he chose to support a lot of other people um, in his court so that they also would not be imposing taxes for the good of the people. Okay. And it, it's a very interesting thing. But then also uh, all of this comes down to this one point in Nehemiah and in, in chapter five and verse 19. And he says this, he says, remember me favorably, my God, for all that I have done for this people. Now, that seems like a very simple statement, and I don't think a lot of people pay attention to this, but it's very clear. It puts a finger exactly on what's motivating Nehemiah. He was a man that was interested more in serving God than he was in serving himself. Okay, and when he says, remember me favorably, he, he's basically asking God. He's saying, Lord, everything I'm doing, I'm doing for this sole purpose that when you think of me, you would think of me with favor. And, and what he is really paying attention to in this case is just literally one thing, what God thinks of him. Okay, he, he has scrapped everything else. He, he gave up on impressing the people around there. And, and even the king, like these things in, in the course of the book of Nehemiah, he has basically had to go against these things. And he's obviously not concerned about what the people of Jerusalem are. Th he's not doing any of this for popularity. That's the bottom line. It's not because of that. It's not because he's trying to get gain out of it because he literally had to step out of one of like one of a, a very, very powerful position as the cupbearer to the king and come here and work with all of these people that were left behind. Um, so what we see is we see a man that is just got a laser focus on God's opinion of him. And that's it. And he understands the word. He understands how, how to please God. He understands um, the truth of God's word directing him to live a certain way. And he's doing that. Okay. And he's doing it as much as he can. And I think for us, when we read this, I think this is a very important point. We have to get to this point where we are truly have, we truly have a laser focus on what God thinks of us. We have a laser focus on how we can know what God thinks of us based on what his word says. And what it says, you know, how we can actually live in that place where we can be at peace with the idea of how God thinks about us, okay? And we know this, it says in Hebrews, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. So 
we, we, we know from the teaching of the word that we must trust God and in trusting him, it pleases him. Okay. We have to live by faith. It says the just shall live by faith. And it says about Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. These people lived by faith. What we see in Nehemiah is we see somebody that's trusting in God. He's putting his faith completely in God and he's walking day by day in that faith. And so listen, this is an important thing. We shouldn't miss this, that, that we need to live by faith. We need to live in a way that is, it's very clear that our life is being governed by our faith in the truth of God's word. And ultimately, that means in, in God himself. So anyways, I hope that ministers to you. I hope that challenges you a little bit. Um, I hope that you take time to think through this so that you can um, grow in this area if, if it's off, okay? And also, as usual, please leave a comment subscribe to my channel. Um, take the time to do that too. That's one second to click subscribe or like it and may God richly bless you.